everything is spirit and whatever we do, we do also to spirit. This land does not belong to us, it belongs to the Creator and it belongs to the species. We are not uh, a higher being than they are. Creation was all equal. The, I'm not better than the buffalo or the rock. We're equal. So that equality happened through creation. So when I look at protection and conservation, then I'm starting to look at it from that perspective of being a part of the environment. Our long-term vision is for Canada um, to become a leader in the global community in regards to um, Euro-Indigenous collaboration around a, a really innovative leading-edge model of uh, biodiversity conservation. And now today, and yesterday, we're here in Canmore uh, talking with Indigenous people from across Canada about how we can take the, the lessons, the teachings in the ICE report and uh, apply it to real situations. And uh, we've, we found that when uh, we have uh, the federal government, the provincial government, municipal governments, Indigenous governments, Indigenous people, uh, nonprofits and others working together for a common cause and establishing protected and conserved areas or Indigenous protected and conserved areas, uh, the, the result is, is, is very, very promising and, and bright. So the October IPCA gathering is uh, by Indigenous peoples and for Indigenous peoples. It's, it's a unique period in Canadian history where First Nations, Inuit and Métis roles and responsibilities in conservation is finally being recognized. And so the gathering itself is being facilitated in ethical space. The gathering opens with uh, the smudging and the opening prayer, recognizing the Treaty 7 Nakoda territory that we're on. The, uh, the sessions are designed and facilitated by Indigenous peoples and in partnership with our um, folks at CWS and the province of Alberta and, and others to ensure that, um, that we honour ethical space throughout but we really have to get everybody moving on this and have the respect to that is cross-cultural and that probably will take a little bit of time but we need to encourage that and that's one of the things I like about the, the National uh, Nature Fund is that it is going to encourage projects being brought forward um, if you will almost from a bottom-up perspective where uh, Indigenous peoples whether Métis or First Nations can bring forward a project and say this is something that we would like it allows them to make a declaration and, 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 and seek a response from the, uh, from the other side or the other government and, and create that cross-cultural learning and showcase it and build um, broader coalitions of support. We've got to continue to um, walk the talk of ethical space. So we've been developing this solutions bundle, which is a marriage between a Western science toolkit an Indigenous Knowledge Systems Medicine Bundle. And, uh, and really what the Solutions Bundle is uh, coming to be is uh, a systems interface between um, two different worldviews to interact in an equitable, ethical way. The Indigenous Pathways Cooperative Alliance uh, met in caucus uh, for the first day and a half of the October IPCA gathering. Um, that includes um, First Nations, you know, uh, the Assembly of First Nations as well in an advocacy role as a national Indigenous organization on behalf of its 630-odd uh, members. Um, the Métis National Council of Canada, we have a strong contingent of Métis uh, at the gathering and in, the, in caucus. Um, and the Indigenous Leadership Initiative as well, Val Courtois and several others from ILI were here to um, um, engage with the uh, Indigenous Pathways Cooperative Alliance and the gathering on the whole, um, as well as the uh, 
core members of the Indigenous Circle of Experts, plus several of the Indigenous members from the National Advisory Panel. I think that the motivation of everyone is, uh, is good. Um, we just need to figure out how we work with each other. And the federal government or other jurisdictions working with uh, First Nations, working with Inuit, working with the Métis Nation, um, we all have our own processes. We all have our own governance structures. Um, we all, ha all have our own cultures and ideas and languages and, and the way we use the land is just a little bit different. We're not the same from uh, the coast of British Columbia to the Atlantic Ocean, we're uh, to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, we all have our own ways of doing things, so I think that is respected. Um, I feel that. You know, I have talked a lot about capacity and that's something that we need in order to generate those ideas uh, to make sure that our backyards are looked after. When we talk Indigenous protected areas, I mean, I envision our own people running beautiful places within our regions, teaching our culture to others to, to respect and to work together and, to, and share our traditional foods uh, um, like we always do and to share our Indigenous knowledge so that they can um, um, survive into the future along with us as well. One of our teachings is water is life. And so I've uh, been encouraging people here at the, at the gathering to go out and see the headwaters, to know where the water comes from. There's a large connection here that we don't normally see. We're cut off by boundaries and, and other uh, restrictions, so we don't really see the whole picture. And one of the reasons why we wanted to have the meeting here in, in Canmore was so that people would have some appreciation of that. Uh, not only the Bow River, but you know, the North Sask, the Athabasca, Fraser River, Mackenzie, like, this is it. Uh, this is where water flows to the rest of the continent. This is how important this area is. An IPCA, what distinguishes it from the other um, protected areas and conserved areas, is the um, indigenous inclusion and leadership. So they're important for many different reasons. Um, the first that I can think of is for resurgence of indigenous governance, indigenous cultures and languages and access to that land. Um, the biggest thing is reconnecting um, to our relationship with the land and that in turn will um, reconnect us to our culture, to our identity as indigenous peoples um, throughout Canada. Reality is, is in this country, in this day and age, you're not going to get stuff done. You're not going to conserve biodiversity in huge swaths of Canada. You're not going to turn species around from the declines they're in unless you have Indigenous support and, you, and they're at the table. And in effect, often they're driving or co-driving what's happening. I see those existing land use plans and, and some of the existing tribal parks and other, other kind of products that have been developed by Indigenous nations as worthy of recognition. And I often hear um, in our travels and work with, with different nations that, that the nations are doing this not just for themselves, but for everybody. There's, you know, that cultural responsibility to land isn't just personal, it's about being good for the good of humanity. And so I think that there's space there for partnership and recognition and reconciliation. That healing, that reconciliation, between us as peoples is essential to not only objectives associated with justice, but it's only then that we can talk to each other. It's only then that we can take 10,000 years of baseline data on how to live on this land and bring that and work together to heal ourselves and the land they're interconnected. We've been trying to protect this earth for thousands of years, so just, you know, walk with us. We walk, let's walk together, you know, we can do this.